Hi and welcome. In this series we do a quick but complete overview of all the major effect categories. Reverb, filters, EQs, compressors, distortions, saturations and delays. Focusing only on the stuff that is important for you as a music producer. If you like this sort of thing and you would like to see more, you know what to do. Now without further ado, let's dive in and take a look at the second category. Filters and equalizers. First of all, what are they used for? Filters are for removing frequencies, while EQs are used to lower or raise the volume of certain frequencies. Filters go from theoretical 0 decibels all the way down to minus infinity decibels, and thus fully removing frequencies, while most EQs will only allow you to boost or lower a signal by 20 or 30 decibels, or something in that range. But they share many similarities too, which is why I chose to include them in the same category. Some similarities are, they both manipulate incoming sounds with the intent of adjusting the balance of the output by boosting or lowering and removing frequencies. They are both among the most commonly used effects in recording and production. And you will find a filter and EQ section on almost all channel strips. They generally share three of the same controls, frequency, Q and steepness. They both come in different shapes and forms. They both alter the phase of the signal in most situations. Don't worry about this yet though, we'll explain more about this later. And they are both generally combined these days in plugins like Pro-Q, FL Studio's Parametric EQ, Logic's Equalizer and many more. So what are the different shapes and forms in which filters and EQs can be used? Let's first look at the three types of equalization. Bell equalization. This is the most commonly found equalization type. And equalizers generally have three up to 32 bells, with some equalizers allowing for an infinite amount of bells. Its use is to pinpoint a certain frequency and raise or lower the volume of that frequency. Some are parametric, like Pro-Q. Some are semi-parametric and some are graphic. With a parametric EQ, you have full control over the targeted frequency, while with a semi-parametric EQ, you can only set a targeted frequency with predetermined steps. A graphic EQ is different, as it is a row of bands with bells at predetermined frequencies, only allowing you to raise or lower the gain. Shelf equalization. There are both low and high shelves and it is basically a half bell, with a peak for a low shelf being extended to 0 Hz and for a high shelf to 20 kHz and up respectively. Please note that a shelf is for boosting or lowering certain frequencies in volume, not for fully removing them. That's what filters are used for. Tilt equalization. Tilt is a very interesting equalization type found in most modern parametric equalizers. It comes in two forms, flat tilt and normal tilt. Flat tilt is a great way to cleanly pivot the character and brightness of a sound. It adds no real coloration and it has no real resonance. A very clean way to change the character of the sound. The normal tilt is basically a combination of a low and a high shelf combined and sounds more musical but less clean than flat tilt because of the logarithmical nature of it. Now let's examine the filter types available. First let's get rid of a common misconception. High pass and low cut filters are the same thing, removing low frequencies and passing through high frequencies. The same is true for high cut and low pass filters. They remove or cut high frequencies while passing through low frequencies. They can be used to clean up a sound from unwanted rumble or hiss, but can also be used to add movement to a sound by automating it. A great example of this is what DJs do with a filter on the mixer. The bandpass filter. If you take a look at the shape of a bandpass, you can clearly see the similarities between a bell on an EQ and a bandpass filter. 
but where the peak of a bell returns to its baseline at 0 dB, which would be no change in volume, a bandpass will end at minus infinity dB, which means no output at all. This is also a great option to add movement to a mid-range sound by automating the frequency. The notch filter. A notch filter is a high pass and a low pass combined, but in reverse order, with the low pass being lower in the frequency range than the high pass, effectively creating a dip. This can be used to accurately completely remove a certain frequency and is also a great option to add foul like movement to a sound by automating. And yes, there are more filter types possible, as is evident by the filtering section in Serum. But these filters are generally only used for sound design and as creative effects, not as mixing tools. Now, the three most important controls. Let's start with frequency. This control is for setting the frequency in hertz at which the filter or EQ is in the middle of its curve. So you could also call it the center frequency. Then we have Q, which sets the sharpness of the band, which determines in which the range of the signal will remain unchanged by less than minus or plus 3 dB, essentially determining how smooth or peaky the curve will be. And lastly, steepness, which determines the steepness of the curve from 0 decibels to minus infinity decibels, with minus infinity being no output at all of course, in decibels per octave. For me, this was always a weird value and control that I didn't fully understand. Decibels per octave, what the hell? This is as it has to do with logarithmic graphs and all that good stuff. Later in the second video we go more in depth about exactly this. So now we know the three most important controls shared between filters and equalizers. Let's check out the last but very simple control that only the equalizer has. A gain or volume knob with which you control the amount of decibels the signal is raised or lowered at your selected frequency. With these four controls and a plugin that will allow you to manipulate them freely, it is possible to create an insane amount of shapes to truly focus on the frequencies you want to target, but to know what frequencies to target. With filtering and equalization, we must first understand some terminology used by studio engineers and producers as how to describe the sonic characteristics of a sound. Because to fix a problem, we must first understand what we are trying to fix. This is where your ear training will come into play. You will have to learn when you hear a sound to instantly be able to define, to communicate to yourself and others what the characteristics of a sound are and how to remedy it if there is something you don't like. That's why I have made this frequency guide, the commonly found terminology for when you have too much of a certain frequency and the frequency ranges associated with these terms. You can find it in the description. Let's go over each range first and how to fix the problems. You should now know how to fix most of the obvious peaks that can make a sound worse. To not make this video too long, I've decided to split the video up in two separate parts. In the next video, we'll go into spotting and hearing deficiencies, filling out the frequency spectrum, minimal phase, linear phase, Nyquist theorem, 
and explaining why the frequency scale is logarithmic. I truly hope you found this video to be helpful and informative. And thanks a lot for watching until the end of the video. With that being said, only around 3% of the people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. So please help me out and subscribe and click all the other buttons too. Have a great day and I hope to see you for the next episode of this series. Until then, check out my previous videos. See ya!